Where do the gods live? Where do we live? And where do all the other groups from the tree of Idrisil live? It's a very interesting subject. And with the right amount of mind joy, as I call it, which is someone who's searching, you can make it with an imagination spout anywhere. If you're interested to learn what my aspect of it is, carry on watching. Thank you for being here this week to watch this video. I wanted to do something about where the gods exist, where we exist, and why it takes certain requirements to be able to connect. Now there are many parts to the way I do it and so what I'm giving you is my own interpretation. But the tree of Idrisil is like the spinal column in a person's body and it has different parts coming off of it. And we are around the area of if you were looking at the chakras we would be around the sacral area because below that you would have the kundalini which would be niflheim or it would be helheim it would be the lower parts the death realm so i'm not going to look at it as the chakras but what i am going to try to show you is we have many planets in the universe and the cosmos which is always left out of things always left out because people think you're a bit funny if you're into all that well i'm afraid we have to experience the universe within the practice of seda because we journey to the planets we journey to the other realms we journey to the underworld and we journey to places yet unknown and it is part of our practice. So today I really wanted to explain about the Rainbow Bridge and the cosmos and us. Firstly, I want to show you I have finished my headdress and I said I would show you once it was finished and so I'm going to put it on now. <laughs> I did put more feathers on and I did put a few bones on it. <laughs> so I don't know how you got on with yours guys because that was the last one that I did about how to make one and I'm putting it on now to show you. Now getting back to Talk about Midgard first. Midgard is basically the world of man. And the world of man is the world. It's a sphere. But when you look at it on the Tree of Idrisil uh, diagrams, you will see it as a flat place. But that's fine. You need to think about the scientific fact and the mythological fact. And you have to bridge that gap. And we have that capability in our minds. And so I want you to think of the world of man as whatever way you want to view it. Now, when you look at it in the myths, it talks about Yotnamanda, who is the huge snake that goes around the earth, but is in water. Scientifically, we can look at the ozone layer around the earth, and we can see that that is our protector. Even though Yotnagaanda is not, he's still there. And it is a deterrent against the other world attacking us. Even though he is not our friend, and he is the son of the trickster, Loki, he is still there. And so we are surrounded. The only way we could get any help would be from the gods themselves because they were proud of their creations. Us, we are their creations. And so they want us to be safe. Hence we have Thor, who is our protector. 
and when we see thunderstorms, we know he is going to war on our behalf. We know that he is there for us. If you're in a problem psychologically or spiritually, you can call upon Thor and he will be your aid. But in Seder, we look at this in a totally different way because our eyes have been opened to all these different places. And so we have to make our own understanding of it, which is what you will also do when you start to walk the worlds, as I call it. Now, we have to keep grounded as well, but the thing that the gods did was to put in the rainbow bridge. And it was supposedly for them to come to us, not from us to go to them. Yet it had been used for some warriors in death to use to get to Asgard. So, the rainbow bridge is a spiritual bridge, but scientifically it's also the bridge of the unconscious between the two spheres of the brain. And it is all connected. We are the tree. We are Idrisil. And we allow whatever we want to come into our sphere. So we ourselves are life. We ourselves are the rooted tree. We ourselves are Asgard and Helheim. Scientifically, we can think of it like that. But as a combination of people in the world, we are also spiritual. And that spirituality allows us to find ways to meet with the gods. Now, the reason we do a lot of meditations is to train our very being, our very spiritual body and our spirit within to move to move upwards, to move towards the gods. And so we need things that help us to get there. And that will be things like wearing things like this. Um, drumming, Golda. There are so many ways that we can shift. And once learnt, and once we can do that, there's no holding us back. The gods meet with us when we can meet with them. So for people who are studying the Nordic belief systems, there are many paths out there and each one is different. And this does not go by where you live in the world, who you are, what color skin, because if you go back to the Viking days. There were many different types of people living there that traveled and stayed there. Odin himself traveled Midgard, the whole of Midgard, and he had experiences and he brought a lot of learning back from different places to the Vikings, to the Nordic races. So we cannot say to people, you're not allowed to practice Nordic belief systems. So that Seder practitioners do believe that there is more lives within us. And so there is reincarnation. Yet we, we do not call it that. But what we do know is that we are not feared of death because we know it is not the end. And we know there is more to come. The circle, ever bound together, never broken. And so in this video, I just wanted to talk about how do we know that we are connected to the gods? How do we know we are doing it all correctly? Well, I want to say straight away, to connect you need to be renownedly knowing of yourself. It takes time and it takes effort, but it also takes the right temperament. We are vulvas, we are priestesses, we are whatever you want really to call us, but we're seers. We are magical, 
magical beings. We know things that others don't. We spend time with the gods. We spend time in our spirituality. Our lives are split between death and life. But for many who might know a Seder practitioner, you will know they are quiet. They do not live life to the full. They are very spiritual and they sit in their own space. Because they have a full life in spirit. They have a full life trying to keep the two things balanced. And this video, as I was saying, is there are many ways we can do this. One of them is by using elements. Another one is to use cosmos energy and music. The reason we use the drum is not because we just like to drum. There's a reason. And it's because when we tap the drum, there is an energy there is a flow okay so why is that well the reason for that is because if you look at the universe and each planet as it turns on its axles it makes a noise and there has been recordings of each planet from the cameras that have gone out that have filmed it they have noted different sounds and if you play each sound it is a note and that note makes a tune and they call it the song of the universe. We have song on the planet also. Anything that makes a noise that is nature, birds singing, trees rustling, the, the movement as you walk on earth and on grass. Movement itself when you dance, you make a sound. When you rattle, you make a sound. And humans have the ability to sing, to make noise, a poem, an invocation, an evocation, whatever it may be. It is magical. It is a gift from the gods. And when we use it in the right way, we can do marvellous things, we can do healings, sound therapy, we can do miraculous healings, we can send people on journeys, and we can ourselves live a more better life. I want people to realise that this pathway that I am on, it's personal, it's about how I myself perceive what it is I have learnt. Okay, so to any of you out there that really want to learn Seder, you first of all have to lose yourself, lose your opinions, lose your daily grind and become who you are inside. And that can take a long while for a lot of people. But once you've got to that point is when you can then use things to get you where you want to go. When I journey, I journey with the gods and the goddesses and the Valkyries. I will be taken. Seda isn't just about helping other people. It's about knowing our purpose on this earth. And that includes allowing the existence of the cosmos to be part of our practice. Or the earth, the sky, animals, speaking to animals, speaking to plants, knowing that there is life in everything. Knowing that when you burn herbs and spices, that that fragrance lifts to the gods themselves. Not just lighting it because it's part of a ritual, but really knowing that that incense is a gift to them. And they will know when you give an offering, be it meat, be it bread, be it wine, 
or beer. It's not an empty gesture. They feel it, smell it, know it, and it is theirs when you've given it to them. And that is why when I say about giving an offering, it must come from your hearts. It must come from your soul. It must come from your feeling. It must come from your ego. And I say that because nobody can lose their ego. It is part of our spirits. And I say spirits because we believe in many spirits, many lives, many parts of us. They were given to us by Odin and the gods when they found us two lumps of wood and gave us a human life to look like them. But we have a choice when we're here, whether we are to step upon our spiritual path or not. That is the first choice, guys. And once you make that choice, then you think, how and what am I going to do then? And everything is out there for you to look at. Everything is out there that you want to learn. But it doesn't mean that it's particularly for you. But you will learn things from paths that you really are not on. And it will be gained. You will gain. All knowledge is good. Doesn't matter. It's all a learning experience. A learning curve. And so I just wanted to tell you in this video today that it is about the self. It is about who you really are inside. And if you really want to practice Seda, you have to die to the self and become the spiritual. The initiations of Seda, they come from the gods. They come as lessons to be learnt. Each lesson can be a very harsh lesson and it can take you time to get through but they are put there to see how far you can go they are put there to see how strong you are they are put there to see how much you really want it and at the end of it you don't get a title you don't get a badge or a certificate but what you do get is a step further on your journey an understanding of more things to aid people. Now, also, people have said to me in the past, Seder is a wicked path, it's evil. They're going by what life was like in the old days, when village was against village, and town against town, and country against country. And so many things were done by the Seders to salvage the people of their village. They didn't live with those people, they were normally segregated, but they would do their utmost to aid them. And today we live in a different world, we live in a different Midgard. There are troubles, yes. There are strifes, yes. And we don't have tiny little villages where we know everyone. The gods work in mysterious ways, but they also work with those that practice. And so each Seder practitioner will work in a different way. Some with healing, some with mediumistic abilities, some with music, some with other abilities. Gorza. The thing I'm trying to say to you, anybody out there that is starting to become a Seder practitioner. It's not all about using your drum, your rattle, your runes. It's an inner journey. It's a journey of exploration. It's a journey of the unknown. It's also an opening to things not yet understood by the majority of humans. So the reason I wanted to say all this to you today is that anyone who really wants this it's a hard work. You will know if it is for you and you will want to walk in it. It will become clearer to you as you go on. 
I wanted to put this up because I wanted you to understand what Seda is, what it isn't. It shouldn't stop anybody. I am back. I am still very, very tired from the illness that I had. But I'm getting there and I just wanted to put this one up quickly because I've got a great one coming up for you. All about hooging and mooning, but not in the way you think. So, I hope to see you on that one, which will be coming up within the next week. But obviously, I wanted to explain, for those that come to the channel, that don't understand what Seder is, I wanted to sort of explain it and give you the outline of what it is for people. I hope it hasn't bored you and I will be back really soon but I hope those of you that have done your headdresses that they turned out really well. So I'm going to leave it here. I hope you're all well. So wherever you are, whatever time of day, night or evening it may be, I wish you the best ever. House of the Lane.